I'd like to show you an alternative method to calculating out a cross-country flight plan using an electronic flight bag known as an EFB. There's several steps in performing this, so we have typed out a step-by-step -step that you can have access to by click clicking on the link below in the description. Now, we're going to use a popular app called ForeFlight. And this, the subscription that we're going to be using today on ForeFlight is called Pro Plus. There's a couple different options that you can order and pay for, um, but today we're using Pro Plus. Now, my intent is not to give you a complete tutorial on the ForeFlight. It's just simply to describe how you can easily calculate out a cross-country flight plan. Now, as we're calculating out our cross-country flight plan, it's very important that we put the proper numbers in in order to get the proper calculations out. What I mean by this is that we must insert the proper true airspeed, the proper fuel burn for our particular flight and particular aircraft that we're going to use for this flight. You know the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. That definitely pertains to this. Let's get started. When you first open your screen, it may not be on the sectional chart that you want, so simply click on the top left area and then select US VFR sectional chart. Now we have something that looks a little more familiar to us. Now another important thing is to be sure that we have the current database. ForeFlight alerts us when our database is not up to date by showing a red circle in the bottom right hand corner with a number or two in there. And then all you'd have to do is click on that and go through the process to update your data. Now let's get started. The first thing we have to do is create an aircraft profile. We do this by selecting more on the bottom right scrolling down the, bot the uh, left side and selecting aircraft. Now notice over here I already have two aircraft in here but it's not the one that we're going to fly today. So to add an aircraft you simply hit the plus sign and then we're going to fill in the information. The tail number today will be November 870 Sierra Papa. The serial number we don't have to add in there. The aircraft type is a Cessna 172. So when I type in C172, it gives me a choice and I want to scroll down to find the S model. By selecting the S model, the uh, app is going to take the information from the POH and insert it into my flight plan. Next, it asks for aircraft category, we are airplane, followed by aircraft color, white. It's defaulted to white, which the aircraft is, but we also have some red and orange stripes. So we'll add that in there. Red and orange. Moving on, it asks for our home airport. We'll put in Kilo Golf Mike Uniform. The next section asks for air, aircraft speed units, and we could either go in miles per hour or knots, and we're going to use knots. Next, we're to the performance profile. We have to click on Add Basic Performance Profile and fill in the information. So the profile name, this is a Cessna 172. I can name it whatever I want, but I'm going to mark it as a C172S model. Okay, and now it asks for our climb and then the cruise and then the descent information. So for our climb, our true airspeed for the climb is very similar to our indicated airspeed for the climb as we discussed in an early video. So if our true airspeed for the climb is going to be 80, we just type that in, whoops, open the box and type in 80. Next it asks for our climb, uh, our climb fuel per hour and in order to fill this out we can either go by what we know by flying the airplane on a regular basis and looking at the fuel flow meter, which is usually around 14 or 15 gallons per hour. So I can either put that in there or we could use the climb chart out of the POH. So with the climb chart out of the POH, we have time, fuel, and distance to climb. And in our early calculations, we had calculate out, calculated out our departure pressure altitude to be 500 feet and our cruise pressure altitude to be 5,000 feet. Moving over, this climb speed is based on a VY speed of around 73. And then our rate of climb fluctuates between 700-ish down to 500-ish as we climb through the higher altitudes. 
And next we have uh, time in minutes, and it looks like it would take us about seven or eight minutes to climb. And then our fuel usage looks like it's almost two gallons. I would just use two gallons to err on the safe side. So now using this information here, we can use our E6B to find out our gallons per hour or somewhere in the ballpark anyways. So first of all, we're using this little formula on the bottom and it says to put our total gallons, which was two, so we find two gallons on the outer ring, and it says to put our timer on the inner ring. So the time was about eight minutes. So if I have two gallons over an eight minute period, the pointer now points to our fuel burn of about 15 gallons per hour. So we'll enter 15. Next, it asks for our climb rate. Well, according to our chart, it was going to be somewhere between five and 700 feet per minute if we used a VY speed, but we're gonna use a normal cruise climb of 80, and that usually puts us around 500 feet per minute. Next, it asks for our cruise true airspeed, and we had calculated out this before in an earlier lesson by using the cruise performance chart and we had interpolated between four and five thousand, or excuse me, four and six thousand, and we interpolated between the standard temperature and the um, 20 degrees above standard. And earlier we had came, come out with um, a 105 for our true airspeed. So 105. And again, this number only works for today on the altitude we selected under the, the uh, pressure and temperature conditions for today's flight. Next, we have the cruise fuel flow and we had calculated out on a previous lesson that it would have been around eight and a half gallons per hour, but we rounded that up to nine gallons an hour to err on the safe side. Now, if we're using the four flight to calculate out our flight, our cross-country flight plan on the check ride, the examiners always wanna know where did you get these numbers from? So be prepared that even though you've calculated this out on the four flight, be prepared to go to the performance charts in the POH to show the examiner exactly where these numbers came from, and they would be happy to see that you've rounded your numbers up or down on the side of safety. Next, we have our descent true airspeed. Well, in the descent, because gravity is on our side, we can descend faster, the same speed, or slower. I typically like to fly an extra 10 knots faster on the descent, but that's just my choice. So I would like to go 115 on the descent, and my fuel burn is gonna end up being roughly about the same because I'll have to pull the power back just a little bit and nose down in order to get that 115. So my fuel burn is gonna be still around nine gallons an hour. Next, it asks for the descent rate. Well, 500 feet per minute is pretty comfortable for our ears to clear, so we'll choose 500. Now we've inserted all the information and cre created a profile for November 8700 PAPA. Now to complete the aircraft profile, we'll go back and back again, and then we're gonna verify all this information down here on the side. So our home airport is Golf Mike Uniform, we're in knots, um, we completed the performance profile, our best glide speed, it pulled this from the pilot operating handbook, but we wanna verify that it's correct, which it is. Our best glide ratio is correct, the default cruise altitude, we'll just leave it at 6,000 for right now. We're gonna fix that in a moment. And then it has our maximum ceiling um, of uh, 12,000. Fuel, 100 low lead. The fuel units are in gallons. Now for our engine start, taxi, and takeoff fuel, it has 1.33 in here. But that doesn't pertain to all airports. On our time, distance, and fuel climb chart, at the bottom it said add 1.4 gallons for engine start taxi and takeoff allowances. But we fly out of a fairly busy class delta airspace and it's often that we have to sit number three or four in line before takeoff. So I would like to increase this number to 2.5 just in case that happens to be one of the days that we have to have a delayed takeoff. Next um, is our filing information. So for the FAA equipment, they just wanna see a slant golf here to represent that we have GPS. And now we're into the ICAO information. On a previous lesson, we went through how to fill out an ICAO form that looks something like this. And so for this, we've filled it, uh, 
uploaded uh, Golf, Slant Sierra, Bravo 2 Sierra. The weight category was L for light. And then we don't really have to put anything in for the performance base navigation. And then any other information we want to add in there, we can. And we're not uh, special, special handling aircraft, such as uh, an aircraft putting out forest fires or uh, transport, transporting some, somebody or something for medical purposes. All right, under the safety equipment, uh, we don't have any dinghies. And down here in the emergency section, we have life jackets, radios, and survival. So we want to click on radios because we do have an ELT and we do have VHF. So now we've completed our aircraft profile.